to make these talks. All right, thank you. Is everyone in here, uh, everyone familiar with TED Talks? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And is, have you ever uh, like watched a TED Talk and just wish you could, even though it was filmed months or years before you watched it, wish you could interact with that, mm -hmm. that guest speaker? Um, and everyone is familiar with 60 Minutes, the news interview, 60 Minutes? Um, and I, I really, those, those interviews really resonate with me. Well, in the Army, we have a product that kind of captures both the uh, TED, TED Talks and 60 Minutes. Mm -hmm. We got packaged into one, uh, one video product and we call it LeaderCast. Um, and that's what my talk about is today. I'm focusing on my action research project focused on integrating digital stories, known as LeaderCast, into an uh, online community of practice. Besides my day job where I, where I teach at West Point, the center I'm assigned to, we also run um, an online community of practice that is uh, laser being focused on the leader development of uh, lieutenants and captains in the Army. This is a project I, I did at uh, Pepperdine uh, University. I was in the uh, Masters of Arts and Learning Technologies program. So as I was, as I was looking at my uh, research project, I did a lot of reading on Cold's experiential learning and uh, Wenger, um, community of practice theory, and really saw an opportunity here to get integrate these videos, have some social learning happen, also based on the experiences of these leaders in combat. To understand the leader cast form and what I'm talking about, it's more important to understand the uh, community of practice I described. So uh, the community of practice is a company command and platoon leader um, communities of practice. We have over, uh, at the time of this project started, we have over 20,000 members. We had a worldwide span. Here's a snapshot. At the time, um, we had users logging in from Connell, United States, in uh, Washington State, Kentucky. Uh, we had users logging in from Afghanistan and also from Korea. What the community practice is focusing on is connecting current lieutenants and captains with future lieutenants and captains and also uh, past lieutenants and captains. Just to give you some context, I'm a major. So I'm higher, I'm a higher rank than a captain or lieutenant. But this used to be me, here is the current. It also used to be me in the future. This is really powerful. So West Point cadets, officer candidates, and our uh, and students in the Reserve Officer Training uh, Corps in a lot of different colleges are considered future. In this community, they connect with current captains and lieutenants. As they're preparing to become these ranks, they're connecting, they're sharing experiences. And you have people in the past, like myself, majors and uh, higher, will come in and share their experiences as well and help mentor. All this happens in this community of practice. Um, so the leader cast form is just one part of that. And speaking of leader cast, I'm going to give you an example so you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is a short uh, clip. This is a typical experience in there. This was actually shot in Iraq. This is a lieutenant. He was in a leadership position of a platoon leader. And he's sharing uh, an experience he had. On this instance, I found several pistols in the car, ski masks, the license plates on the car were fake, and there was no registration information, no documentation for the car being owned, and all the VIN numbers were scratched off. It was clearly a stolen car, and it was clearly a death squad that was, that was using the vehicle as transport. I made a decision on the ground that I had no means to get rid of the car, destroying it, to destroy the car. Okay, that was really short, but he was talking about experience. He was talking about a challenge and dilemma. He had pulled over a car. Um, this is in Iraq. Um, if you were paid attention to the news a few years ago, there was a lot of sectarian violence. You had uh, some Sunni versus Shia. So he had pulled over a car that he suspected was one of those death squads. And he had to make a decision on what to do with it. So but the power of this is he, he shared an experience that so many officers and leaders in the, ar in the military, or really in the Army, we're focused on the Army, face when they're deployed, whether it be in combat, or maybe we have other, we have a whole spectrum of experiences in here, whether they're in training, or they're doing a humanitarian mission, like in the Horn of Africans, Horn of Africa right now is a big focus for us, so they're sharing these experiences and are captured in these two to five minute videos, which leads to the problem. So the problem, um, so when I approached this, when I started this in 2011, the problem here is the, uh, here's the community of practice. <coughs> So when you logged in, you would come to the front, the, uh, the front, um, front porch, we called it. Across, this, across the top, you had um, all the different 
uh, different uh, sub-communities you could get into. For, for the purpose of this presentation, we'll focus on platoon leader, company command, and leader cast. So uh, you can log in, and then you can choose to go to any one of those uh, sub-communities. The big problem was, once you were, say, you jumped into platoon leader, and you're in there sharing, um, looking for something, looking for contact, share experiences, looking for an answer, you could not um, get to where the videos were. So as a result of this, we had over 1,500 of these videos. And at the most, we were getting 600 hits a month on them. So it was really, it was all this awesome knowledge, great knowledge and experience captured, and no one was looking at it. So I, I knew that if we somehow integrated the videos into the discussion forum, that they would, they would get watched. And then also I knew that if I could uh, integrate somehow increase the interaction between um, the viewer and the interviewee, I could start a conversation, and that conversation would cause the interviewee to reflect more on the experience that they shared in the video, um, and then share more of that experience with the, uh, with the community member. Um, in each of the forums, in, in Platoon Leader, in Company Command, Company Command is oriented on, on captain, we built this video carousel that had that had thumbnail but was actually still linked into the, the regular leader cast forum. So all these videos were on display right here. Um, and it, it changed weekly. Every week would be a new set of videos that were delivered. And we labeled them in several different ways. Once someone came in here, they, they found this video interesting. They clicked on that video, for example. They would end up right here. This, this was very powerful. We had a lot of, uh, we had a huge, spike in the uh, amount of videos viewed because of this. So we designed, so once you came through the carousel, you watched the video. On this side, we also built, we call it the recommended box. Based on the subject of the video you chose, we would deliver up a whole other menu of videos. Um, we also use the social tools available with our software. And so for, this is Brian Reed. And so, um, Dana Regal right here, what she did is watch the video and ask them a question. Within the, our, our uh, military system, they were notified that someone had asked a question. And they would go, usually within 48 hours, and respond. So this became, this, this became really powerful. And if you read, if you read about Kolb's experiential learning and, and uh, Wenger's community practice theory, it's kind of where they crossed. Because we had them reflecting experiences in the interviewee, Reflecting experiences and sharing them, and in a social setting. So that, that was our solution. And here is um, so I did three cycles of action research for this project. So my guiding research question was how do I better connect new leaders to experience in the field? How can I influence the role of leader cast so that we as an organization can help them? Learn? So cycle one, as I mentioned before, cycle one, we built the video carousel. Um, uh, deployed it into the, 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 the uh, community. What types of labels created interest? So I, I decided to label them two, two different ways. One is imperative statements, and one is inter interrogative statements. Um, imperatives would be some kind of provocative statement, and so would the question would be provocative, to get people to, to watch the video. Cycle two was continuing to collect data on um, what types of labels created interest. I started to focus on how can I increase participation between the interviewees and the community members. Um, in cycle three, I decided to introduce a peer panel. Now, the peer panel in in the community of practice was several uh, was community members who assumed a leadership role within the community. They were kind of like the topic leads. We had different topics in there. So what I wanted to create was a panel of these community leaders to go out and increase the activity, increase their participation on the videos, so they would uh, go and ask questions. For, for the rest of this presentation, cycle two is what had the biggest impact on me and where I learned the most. Uh, I'm going to really share with that. I'm going to focus on that cycle. But. So the biggest thing, um, how did I get increased the uh, interaction? Wenger writes about behind the scenes work. How you get front page results is behind the scenes work. The, uh, as I went through the videos, I screened every video for selection for the carousel. As I found that was very interesting, what I did, because I wanted to get the, uh, the people being interviewed involved, I sent them an email. I said, hey, um, hey I selected your video for uh, to be featured here, a very powerful story. 
would you be willing to interact with any community members that had questions? And I usually, uh, it was very powerful responses that I got. Here's two of them right here. Um, and we, we, I found out when I emailed them, I, one, I was establishing an important relationship. Two, I was letting them know that their experience count, their knowledge counts, and that they were assuming kind of a leadership position within the community. This is very powerful. And it got them more involved in the communities. However, with that, there were some unintended consequences. I was so focused on how to write the statement, whether imperative or interrogative, interrogative, and I didn't focus on what really meant the most, um, which was the details and the label on what the, the content of the video. Um, so a lot of the videos that were really good, I was just so, I went through a string of 10 videos, all right, these five are uh, in, in, in interrogative statements, these five are imperative. I didn't really focus so much as how the label should disclose what was in the video. And I started seeing drops in the number of clicks and the number of views. From that, I, I, I finally figured out that the videos that had more detail in the, in the label would get more views. And a lot of times, uh, we'll have people that come into the community, maybe they're looking for something specific. And it's almost, if you label something very vague, it's almost a waste of their time. It's almost a risk. And their time is money. So I learned something from that. Um, increased community participation. I did a lot of the emailing behind the scenes work, getting people involved. I introduced a peer panel. And it did have a little bit of an effect, not a lot. What we found, though, was it wasn't a natural thing. In the community, the discussion forums, people built relationships um, with each other, with, and would interact with each other, with various users that, that had built up a reputation that they knew they could trust within the, within the uh, discussion forums. However, in the LeaderCast forum, they're watching a video of someone they didn't know. They might have a lot of experiences, but they didn't. Um, have that relationship built up to leave an actual comment. So as hard as we tried to stimulate that, it didn't work. However, we did get an increase in, uh, we had like a like button. So we had an increase in the number of likes the video would get, but we never saw a dramatic increase in the number of comments. So for the video carousel, um, this was a home run for us, because what we saw was a big spike in the numbers of videos that were being watched. Um, as they were coming in, they would click through the video, um, as I showed you before, they would watch the video, and there would be the recommended box that would show up. We found that those people, as they would click there, they would watch almost every video on that carousel, and then they would stay continue to watch them. So that was a huge hit. And from there, we saw, as I mentioned before, a lot of the likes. So it's been increasing people giving the thumbs up. <laughs> but we, we didn't have a lot of the comment and the interaction that we had hoped for. My final reflection on this project before I went to West Point I really, uh, one of the big things I learned out of this whole project was focusing on the community interaction, building that interaction and relationships between members. I went through a, a kind of identity shift of my own. A lot of these, um, I've, I've been both Iraq and Afghanistan, I was wounded in Iraq. I'm a wounded warrior, a lot of these experiences I identified with, and I think for my professional identity, I, you know, more aligned with my personal identity. There's more tight alignment from that. Um, it's personally because I watched all these videos. A lot of these videos, as I said, they covered a the full spectrum. Some were of combat experiences, some were of training. And a really neat thing, is everyone familiar with the Colbs uh, experiential learning cycle? I'll put a graphic up of it. But what I found with this was uh, I think when Kolb, Kolb's theory was meant to happen in a, like an ordered fashion, in an orderly place. So what I found from some of these stories, though, is that in combat, in, in, or you would probably say not just combat, but, but it, for any complex dynamic situation, like first responders, um, when they're having the experience, there's not a lot of time for reflection in those types of experience. These two, number two and number three, were kind of meshing together. And what I found from these stories is these, these leaders were making decisions so fast, it was almost like a string of action, action, reflection, all, and it was constantly going around, continuously going, constant, constantly generation of knowledge and regeneration of knowledge. All right, action research update. So I graduated from Pepperdine in um, summer 2012, went up to West Point. That fall of 2012, I continued um, this project, went into the fourth cycle. We, had, uh, we actually got 300 more videos, so we were up to a little bit over 1,800 videos. And we increased the uh, numbers in our community to 21,000. And then in uh, January, you, 
reside here in the States, you're aware of the sequester problems we had. Yeah. So uh, we got directed, all these types of forums that were there for professional development got consolidated into one huge community where we were just a sub-community. We ended up losing 55% of our members and a lot of our data and all our, uh, a lot of our uh, artifacts. Uh, that was a pretty big blow, so we went down to a little, a little under 11,000. However, in a little over a year, we've, using what Wenger talks about, you know, the community building principles, focusing on building the relationships, community interaction, we, we built that back up to uh, 13,000. And uh, we're continuing to be built a new video forum that, that just went up about two months ago for the leader cast. We're starting to see some good results out of that. That's where we are today. We're still thriving.